A few words more about Mrs. Hambert while the going is good. A bad accident is to happen quite soon. I had been always aware of the possessive streak in her, but I never thought she would be so crazily jealous of anything in my life that had not been she. She showed a fierce insatiable curiosity for my past. She desired me to resuscitate all my loves so that she make me insult them, and trample upon them, and revoke them apostately and totally, thus destroying my past. She made me tell her about my marriage to Valeria, who was of course a scream, but I also had to invent, or to pat atrociously, a long series of mistresses for Charlotte's morbid delectation. To keep her happy, to keep her happy, I had to present her with an illustrated catalogue of them, all nicely differentiated according to the rules of those American ads where school children are pictured in a subtle radio of races, with one, only one, but as cute as they make them, chocolate-colored round eye little lad almost in the very middle of the front row. So I presented my woman, my women, and had them smile and sway, the languorous blonde, the fiery brunette, the sensual copperhead, as if on a parade, as if on parade in a bordello. The more popular and platitudinous I made them, the more Mrs. Hambert was pleased with the show. Never in my life had I confessed so much or received so many confessions. The sincerity and artlessness with which she discussed what she called her love life, from first necking to connubial catch as catch can, were ethically in striking contrast with my clip compositions, but technically the two sets were congeneric since both were affected by the same stuff, soap operas, psychoanalysis and cheap novelettes, upon which I drew for my characters and she for her mode of expression. I was considerably amused by certain remarkable sexual habits that the good Harold Hayes had had according to Charlotte, who thought my mirth improper. But otherwise her autobiography was as devoid of interests as her autopsy would have been. I never saw a healthier woman than she despite thinning diets. Of my Lolita, she seldom spoke. More seldom, in fact, than she did of the blurred blonde male baby whose photograph to the exclusion of all others adorned our bleak bedroom. In one of her tasteless reveries, she predicted that the dead infant's soul would return to earth in the form of the child she would bear, she would bear in her present wedlock. And although I felt no special urge to supply the Humbert line with a replica of Harold's production, Lolita with an incestuous thrill I had grown to regard as my child, it occurred to me that a prolonged confinement with a niece caesarean operation and other complications in a safe maternity ward sometime next spring would give me a chance to be alone with my Lolita for weeks, perhaps, and gorge the limp fat with sleeping pills. Oh, she simply hated her daughter. What I thought especially vicious was that she had gone out of her way to answer with great diligence the, question, the questionnaire, questionnaires in a full book she had, A Guide to your, to your Child's Development, published in Chicago. The rigmarole went year by year and mom was supposed to fill out a kind of an inventory at each of her child's uh, birthdays. On Law's 12th, January 1st, 1947, Charlotte Hayes, near Becker, had underlined the following epithets 10 out of 40 under your child's personality. Aggressive, boisterous, critical, distrustful, impatient, irritable, inquisitive, listless, negativistic, neg negativistic, underlined twice, and obstinate. She had ignored the 30 remaining adjectives, among which were cheerful, cooperative, energetic, and so forth. It was really maddening. 
with a brutality that otherwise never appeared in my loving li wife's uh, mild nature, she attacked and rooted such of Lowe's little belongings that had wandered to various parts of the house to freeze there like so many hypnotized bunnies. Little did the good lady dream that one morning when an upset stomach, the result of my trying to improve her on her sauces, had prevented me from accompanying her to church, I deceived her with one of Lolita's anklets. And then her attitude toward my saprous darling's letters. Dear Mummy and Hammy, hope you are fine. Thank you very much for the candy. I crossed out and written again. Lost, I lost my new sweater in the woods. It has been cold here for the last few days. I'm having a time. Love, Dolly. The dumb child, says Mrs. Humbert, has left out a word before time. That sweater was all wool, and I wish you would not send her candy without consulting me. 